Welcome to Rotary and Serving Our Community. With us today we have uh, two special guests. Uh, they're going to be talking about a very unique Rotary Club. It's an e-club and there's actually two of them that we have represented today. With me I have Susan Weaver and Les Esposito. Susan, uh, which club are you with? I am with the Rotary e-club of One World. Okay, and that is located? We where? are in the world. <laughs> 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 on the, the internet. <laughs> Very good. And Les, how about you? Well, we're called Global Eagles. We've Global been around Eagles. about 107 days so far. We were, <laughs> we were chartered May 8th, and um, our district name is Rotary E Club of Global Service, District 5240. And what makes an E Club unique, different mm -hmm. from, I would say, a traditional Rotary Club? Well, I would say in the main, it's that we, at least for our club, we meet online. Uh, we do not have uh, physical weekly meetings. We're, our members are meeting online and attending meetings online. And that's, of course, different from traditional Rotary Clubs. Very, very different. Less anything else? Well, I think internationally, um, we have 19 charter members uh, from four different countries, including the USA. We have members from Chile, uh, Guatemala, uh, Canada. And we're represented in four states, uh, I think ca California, Arizona. Idaho, Washington, so the you know the international flavor is fantastic. This is what we really love about it. Um, also, I think what makes it unique is that we can uh, meet almost any time we want. Um, not the meeting um, is a certain day every week. We, we can uh, sign in through our uh, uh, web bar or, or and uh, attend the meeting um, seven days a week, 24 hours a day which is a wonderful thing. That is, especially with the time zones I would imagine right. around oh, being worldwide. Oh, especially, that's true. Um, and I'm glad you brought that up because a lot of times <laughs> uh, we'll be traveling and we might uh, miss our meeting when I was in the, a regular club, like the Montecito Club, which I was a member for 19 years. Uh, I would have to be um, either on that Tuesday at 12 o'clock at the Montecito Country Club. Well, now I could be traveling and if I have my computer or my, my cell phone, I could just mm -hmm. get right in and go to a meeting. Makes a lot of sense. Susan, right. how about you? What is the diversity of your membership? We have uh, members in 15 countries, wow. 10 U.S. states. Oh, okay. So we're represented on every continent except Antarctica. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. <That laughs> is, yeah. That's so impressive. we have a very diverse um, membership, and it is um, particularly important for us to be able to meet 24-7. Or for our members to be able to attend the meeting 24/7, because with members in Australia, for instance, where we have an 18-hour difference, it's uh, it's quite a challenge sometimes. We do have um, online meetings, uh, go-to meetings with uh, the board, and sometimes informal meetings with our club members, just mm -hmm. socials. And there again, it's a, a little bit of a challenge <laughs> to find a time slot that works yeah. for everybody. Some people wind up being bleary eyed. <laughs> <laughs> right. Now, how about language issues? But being in so many different countries, have you faced that yet, or is it mostly mm -hmm. English speaking currently? We have a requirement on our club that you at least be um, literate in English because our uh, programs posted online can in include quite a bit of text. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we do require that people be able to read English fluently. Mm -hmm. um, as for speaking English, we do have members who um, speak it a little less than fluently, but enough to get along. Like so, a yeah. Language. So, members in, in Spain, uh, oh. for instance, uh, we have a member there, and, and though his English is very good, um, you know, there's still certain times when we right. we have a few idiomatic <laughs> differences. We'll put it that way. Okay. But we get along great. Good. How about you, Les? Actually. Um, the 19 charter members we have right now, they open speak English. Um, but we do, we were working on our webpage where we do a translation, at least into Spanish. Um, but I think that's as far as we've gone. We haven't had that trouble yet. Um, no, we haven't really either. But again, because as part of the uh, membership application mm -hmm. process, we do require right. people to be literate at least. Got it. So tell us a little bit about your websites. Um, what, what do you have actually on there besides just a programmer? And what would a program include? 
Well, for us, uh, a program might include uh, written text and or videos, uh, photographs, anything that's visually engaging, and we normally require those to be about a half an hour's worth of attention span in length. Okay. Um, so, and that constitutes the program for the most part, though we do expect members to be um, paying attention to other parts of, the, of not only the web page but also the Facebook page, mm -hmm. private Facebook page that mm -hmm. we have. Okay. And um, our programs are uh, available not just to our own members, but we have a lot of people who make up mm -hmm. uh, every single week from other Rotary Clubs in all other parts of the world. So, so the public could actually view these. Absolutely, see those. they just have to Good. visit our website. Okay, mm -hmm. which I'll be happy to give the address <laughs> for. <laughs> we'll give you plenty of time on that one. We All have right. time for that. Les, how about Same you? With us, you know, our our web uh, site uh, has programs, past programs, future programs. You can do makeups, mm -hmm. which is wonderful. Um, we also um, uh, try uh, to have each member present a program or be in charge mm -hmm. of a program. That's what we're doing right now. Actually, we've had some interesting programs. Mm -hmm. I was very surprised at some of the things uh, these members have done. <laughs> I've learned so much about them. I think it's very exciting, mm -hmm. especially when you're, you're uh, dealing, let's say, with an uh, officer of your club who's in maybe in Spain or Chile, you know, <laughs> and he's talking about a program that he's doing down there. It's almost like going to an international yeah. conference, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's wonderful, yeah. It is. Mm -hmm. Now, how about, um, I would say programs-wise, a unique one, something that really stood out, something very different that you had, hadn't had anticipated You know what? Uh, um, yes, there was one. There was a, a two-week program, and um, one of our members went down to the Antarctic, and he had pictures of this. And, and uh, after I saw those pictures, I don't think I'd ever get in a boat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he, was, uh, he was in a cabin that was basically uh, sometimes above water mm -hmm. through the porthole and sometimes below water. Oh, but it was quite interesting. And I learned a lot. I really did. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think you have more of a chance to see in a program uh, a greater variety than in an e-club program than you will in your in your home, like like in your club that is situated in a city, because usually we're drawing right from maybe a district. Here we're drawing from all over the world, yeah. and I find it quite fascinating. Yeah. Well, and I think the other aspect to that is is that our programs have to be oriented to a wide audience mm -hmm. because we do have people visiting mm -hmm. from around the world. Yeah. So it can't be narrowly focused on right. a particular community, right. except if it's a for instance, a rotary project or something right. of that nature. But um, as Les has indicated, our programs really are a wide range of topics, cover mm -hmm. a wide range. And one of, we just had a recent one actually posted on um, a bicycle trek. <laughs> It's called Bike the Div I think called Ride the Divide, <laughs> wow. which is an incredible. I thought of you with your <laughs> your background with uh, bicycling, uh, because you start in Banff, Alberta, Canada, and mm -hmm. wind up at the U.S. Uh, Mexican border, wow. and it is grueling. It is longer than the uh, than the Tour de France, but wow. uh, and self-supported <laughs> the wow. whole entire way. Mm -hmm. So it was really it was pretty fascinating to learn about it. And actually, uh, a gentleman here from Santa Barbara participated in that and finished the race. Wow. wow. Now, now, was that a, a, a Rotarian, or was that just? Yes, he w I th I'm not sure if he's a Rotarian, actually, okay, but associated with the Unite to Light. Mm -hmm. so. Oh, OK. <laughs> <laughs> Made a lot of sense. Now, was that part of a fundraising effort also, or was that just a challenge? A I, challenge I think race? it's a personal challenge, though I'm sure that there are probably people within it who um, you know, I should do for runs and things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If I if I finish, will you donate so much to my charity? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> so much for mile. <laughs> <laughs> now, how about I would say community involvement? It seems like that would be possibly one of the challenges an e-club would have, you having know, an impact at the local level. Yeah, but one of the greatest things about think about the e-club is they push this idea of buddy clubs. Mm -hmm. So we ask each member to have a buddy club. A buddy club is what we call a normal rotary club in a city that you would get involved with. 
for instance, um, my buddy club would be your club. Uh, we're both from Carpinteria. Mm -hmm. And if I want to do something in the community and I want to do a community project, our basic will try to um, work with your club doing that. And um, if it's mean raising funds, trying to get that information out on our mm -hmm. webpage, you know, and see if any of the other clubs uh, would want to get involved or any members of the clubs would want to get involved. Actually, I can see the e-club eventually being a tremendous avenue for international projects. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I say that is, let us say that a club, let us say your club, want to do an international project and you were looking in a genre of something. And I might speak about this during our club meeting and we might find a club in Chile says, hey, I would like to match that, get into something like that. So I think that's probably one of the nicest things, best things about an e-club. So you're talking about having membership that actually is ambassadors around the world. That's right, exactly, exactly what we are. Because that's what they yeah, I, I, I'm beginning to really believe that we are ambassadors around the world. Yeah. And we're learning to work with people from other cultures. Now we always said we're going to do that as Rotarians, and we do in international conferences. But we actually are dealing with other cultures in our club. They're, I mean, they don't do things uh, the way we do, and, and we don't do things the way they do. But because of this tremendous friendship of Rotary and the dedication of service above self, we have one thing in common, and that's what help our fellow man and peace in the world. It's amazing how uh, we learn to listen and not talk <laughs> to understand what's how going on. How about you, Susan? Yeah, well, we're having the same experience, but I, and I think I would add to what Les has said, uh, that one of the more important things that you need to do when you are considering an international project is to find a good rotary partner mm -hmm. in the area where you want to perform that. And for us, uh, you know, we have people who are already familiar mm -hmm. with folks in that area and with clubs and know what their reputations are and how they would, how open they would be to a partnership or not. And uh, so we can forge those international friendships and working relationships um, much more easily. We don't have to really go outside of our club <laughs> to find them. That's good. <laughs> that is great. Yeah. Um, so what are the advantages? It sounds to me like uh, I know Rotary has um, the grants process where mm -hmm. every dollar you basically get three dollars re in return actually right. over that so um, is that something that would be I would say beneficial something you actually seek out in projects uh, a glo global grant project something like that I, I would for me um, I have done a lot of global projects in my old club and I I look upon the e-club as this is a tremendous uh, uh, opportunity for an e-club to um, get involved with our buddy clubs so they might join together financially and we can sort of um, uh, take advantage of that three to one. Good. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think that it's been sort of interesting for us because we have uh, participated in other people's global mm -hmm. grants by uh, contributing our uh, district designated funds and that's sort of interesting because we're, our members are contributing that, but they're mm -hmm. from other places in the mm -hmm. world, and they funnel into District 5240, <laughs> and then we get to distribute them to yeah. our to our global grants. So. A few years ago, um, actually, I was invited to participate with the grant that your club did. Mm -hmm. um, it was a wheelchair project, I believe. Right. Uh, this was in Tampico, Mexico, where we uh, distributed and delivered 550 mm -hmm. wheelchairs. That was part of a global grant. Right. Mm -hmm. um, did you hear anything about that? Is, are there any members now that have ever spoke on that project and to talk about how successful it was? Or well, earlier in earlier programs, we've had programs on that, but okay. we okay. haven't had a recent program <laughs> on it. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah, one, one story I could was. tell on that project, um, very unique to, I would say, a lot of my international projects. We came back with one gentleman um, who was diagnosed with Legionnaire's disease. Oh dear. From Tampico, Mexico. Oh So dear. that was, uh, I would say, one of the uh, few risks that we had to have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That year also, I believe, you did another wheelchair project, 550 to Guyana. To Guyana, right. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, that's and that one I have heard about because um, the woman who was our president the year before last is Guyanese, and so um, she was, intimately involved in that project, Amanda Richardson. Right, so. right. 
or Richards. So yeah. Um, so that's 1,100 wheelchairs in one wow. year. Right. That is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> right. Truly amazing. How about any other projects have you been involved with that you would like to maybe share with us? Well, um, I can say that we have uh, given financial support to um, trauma treatment uh, in Kenya. We have also given uh, financial support to a project that really is from, a, uh, I think, started by a Palm Springs uh, Sun Up Club uh, on, uh, called Project Peanut Butter, which is a nutritional support program for children in, um, in uh, I'm trying to remember where, exactly Malawi, for one. Okay. And, um, and then we've also given support to um, projects in Niger, Asterisk uh, Youth Project in Niger, and a um, entrepreneur training program in, um, in Ghana as well, in Accra, Ghana, for um, street girls, which are girls that come mm -hmm. to the city, the capital right. city of Accra, um, thinking that they are going to find the streets paved <laughs> with gold and mm -hmm. find quite the opposite. So trying to help them support themselves and be self-sufficient. Very, yeah. very active. Yeah, yeah well, well, and we have a couple others. Yes, we've been very, uh, we have. And some, we did one uh, with a um, Rotary Club of Sherbrooke in, uh, in the province of Quebec in Canada uh, because there was, at Lake Megantic, there was a huge explosion you right, might recall, right, right, destroyed right, the city right, right. or town. And uh, so we uh, partnered with them, provided financial support to provide um, a youth center in that city to help rebuild the city. So now, how did you uh, locate, I would say, these projects? Well, in the last instance, it was through a member of ours whose buddy club uh, knew of the project. He lives in New Hampshire. and so. Um, and ha he actually, I think, had a summer home in that area of Quebec. And so he knew of this project that was ongoing with the Rotary Club of Sherbrooke and got us involved. Mm -hmm. So that was through uh, a member of ours. In other instances, we've had, um, we're, we're looking to develop a global grant now, perhaps, with a, uh, the Rotary Club of Bulawayo, Zimbabwe. And that also was uh, a connection that we made through a member of ours mm -hmm. who is Zimbabwean but lives in Tennessee. Wow, that seems like uh, sure helps having those people all over the yes, world. Yes, it does. It's amazing. Yeah. Oh, and I forgot the other um, big one that we've participated in was in a polio surgery mm -hmm. uh, project or hospital project in India. So. We've been all over the place. <laughs> you sure have. <laughs> How about you, Les? I mean, you're a fairly new club. Yeah, we're a fairly new club, and we're looking forward to doing a lot of international projects. But right now, our focus is kind of on developing membership. And a big project we try to do is to um, get the word out about what the foundation is all about. Mm -hmm. Now, we have these 19 charter members, and we chartered like in May 8th. And on, by July 31st, we became a 100% Paul Harris Fellow Club. Mm -hmm. uh, we felt that um, we had a lot of members who had came from other cl clubs already who were Paul Harris's and multiple Paul Harris's or some who were not. We started working with them. We were able to be able to get everybody to become a Paul Harris. And so that is so, something so we've done. So, by the way, what is, what is a Paul Harris? Well, you know, uh, it is a fellow that was started in the name of Paul Harris, as we know, who is, is the president of our club. And it was started, I think, in 1957, if I'm not mistaken. 47. 47 1947. <laughs> and to become a Paul Ferris, a uh, Paul, uh, Paul fellow, Paul Harris fellow, uh, uh, a member or even someone who is not a member will donate $1,000 to the Rotary Foundation. And when you do that, you get a certificate mm -hmm. and you get a pin like this. Mm -hmm. And, it tell, and um, that money goes into the foundation. As we all know, this was funds Rotary International Projects, helps fund our projects here in the district. And we felt that one, uh, being so young, maybe one of, the, one of the things we wanted to do is to set an example you know, to other clubs that uh, um, uh, try to encourage Rotarians and even new, new members coming into our club to be a Paul Harris Fellow. So that basically shows endorsement to the foundation. Yes, oh, and yeah, definitely, definitely. And from there, you know, because we're going to be tapping into that when we get into our international projects. Right. And I, I think it's, I think we might have broke a record, to tell you the truth, because we were only, 
uh, we became a 100% Paul Harris Fellow only 83 days after we were chartered. So, um, if not, you're pretty close. Close to it. I don't know what else has done it. But I don't know we worked else on has that, that. And we're really happy about it. And okay. um, I think a lot of members of the club are, are um, excited about it. And we encourage them to keep on uh, uh, giving money to the foundation uh, uh, every year. So, our situation. Now, how about age demographics? What is the is average age, or do you have uh, younger people involved, included, or is it more of a, I would say, traditional rotary age? I think most of ours are traditional. They run about 40 to about 60. Okay. Um, um, most of us who have joined this club have been members of other clubs, been very active, mm -hmm. and because of certain situations in our life uh, and lifestyle, we had to drop out of our clubs, but we never really wanted to get it. We really wanted to keep our fingers into Rotary. Uh, for me, um, I've always been a senior active and a, um, a member of, um, um, honorary member of the Montecito Club, but I needed to do a little more than that. So when I had a chance to join this E-Club, it helped me to continue my uh, involvement in Rotary, which I've always been involved with, and do it in a way that I can do it, because I do a lot of traveling and some family commitments I have to deal with that uh, just won't allow me to go to a meeting every Tuesday at 12 o'clock. Right. How about you? Uh, I think that we're a little younger, our average age is a little younger than the traditional Rotary Club, um, and particularly for our international mm -hmm. members. We have a number of people who are in the, say, uh, 40 to 50 year mm -hmm. old category. Mm -hmm. um, however, uh, we do have, it changes, it fluctuates all the mm -hmm. time because we do have people who travel a, a lot and who join our club for this, the reasons that uh, Les has articulated, mm -hmm. it's difficult for them to make a commitment to mm -hmm. a um, to a once a week meeting in a specific place. So it fluctuates a little. I remember um, it was uh, about a year or so ago that you were actually having an outreach program for um, Rotary Peace Fellows. Um, that would bring the age down, I would guess, quite a, quite a ways. Uh, yes, we yeah. have actually we have three. Um, members who are active members who are uh, Peace Fellow alumni and then one who is an honorary member as well mm -hmm. and uh, yeah they are a little bit younger okay. so than the average. How long have you been in Rotary by the way? I've only been in Rotary for about three years. Three years? As, wow. as an active Rotarian. And how old is the club? But that doesn't, I mean, that doesn't include the time I spent as a Rotarian. True, yeah, right, right. Because <laughs> my husband is oh. a long time. Yeah, we have, we have Mike out there in the audience right now making sure you get it all right. Yeah, <laughs> so. so uh, good to you, Mike. Good to see you here. <laughs> so, yes. Um, okay, so three years, you said. Yeah, And the club, club age is about three years also, right? Yeah, it's about, uh, I think, just about mm -hmm. that. Okay. Mm -hmm. How about you, Les? How four, actually. Four? I think we're, we're inching up. On okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good. I've been involved in Rotary for about 23 years. 23 years. I think around about that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow. Uh, um, 19 years with the Montecito Club. So you have seen quite a change with the E-Club. Oh, Would yeah. Would you have never oh. imagined an E-Club? Well, actually, <laughs> when I joined Rotary, I think women were just... Uh, invited to join Rotary about two years before I joined my first Rotary Club. <laughs> so we're doing quite a change. Yeah, yeah. We have quite a change. Now how about with the uh, the internet being being an e-club? I mean you're kind of setting trends here at something Oh new. yeah. I mean this is a, an amazing thing. I mean I cannot believe that I could uh, actually s be involved in a Rotary Club or even a, 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 a um, a meeting with with my officers on my telephone. It's an amazing thing, you know, on your iPhone. Uh, we've come a long, long way, <laughs> long way. And you know, it's so much easier even to contribute now. All you have to say, boom, yes. <laughs> so it's really nice, it really is nice. Yeah. And I think it's uh, something in the future. Uh, I'm gonna s I think we're gonna see a lot more people joining Rotary because of this. I think we're gonna find people who have had to drop out of Rotary for different reasons who still want to be in Rotary, um, will be able to get back into being an active Rotarian. And um, I think that uh, the message has to be really sent out by e-clubs to 
all the clubs in the district that they're, they're being sponsored by, that there is a place that, the, that their members who are dropping out for certain reasons can still be involved with Rotary by joining an e-club. I think that's really important. And how about you? Well, there, there are some challenges to being in an e-club that I think people need to be aware of. And um, one is uh, the difference in the way that you share fellowship. That's right. It, it is really different. Mm -hmm. and, um, but I think that for uh, younger people, particularly people who have been working in with computers and working over the internet for a long time, um, I think that it is a very natural place for them to be, much more so than it is for folks who just mm -hmm. cottoned on to the idea. And so, I mean, for myself, professionally, I worked on a lot of projects where I never met with people in person. We That's were right. strictly over the internet. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was very natural, mm -hmm. and it is for a lot of people uh, in the computer internet generation, if you will. Good. And, I, and I, so I think it will be a very attractive vehicle for Rotary mm -hmm. to expand in. So um, if somebody um, out there in the audience wanted to actually take a look at it, what would they see? What, how would they go? Do you guys have a internet, uh, an address, direction on how to get there? Yeah, I, I have Absolutely. one. I mean, um, we have our own uh, website, which is www.rotaryglobaleagles.org. Ro okay, good. And if anybody wants to under, uh, have more information about becoming a member of the uh, Global Eagles, uh, they can email me, Les Espo, L-E-S-E-S-P-O, at gmail.com. Okay. And yours? Ours is on the World Wide Web, and we are oneworldrotary.org. Mm -hmm. Good. And um, they can email us. Well, if they get to our website, there's a number of links for right. emailing anybody That's in right. our club, <laughs> all the officers, and for uh, membership information. And also, we are um, at our email would be oneworldrotary at mm -hmm. googlegroups.com. Uh, Great. Well, you, can always, you know, also, you can always get to our, our sites, both our sites, mm -hmm. through the district website. Yes. Right. And right. also Rotary International. <laughs> <website>. <laughs> That's right. Well, thank you both very much oh, for your right. time and sharing a pretty fascinating clubs, I would say, something that's cutting edge, and it sounds like just about anybody could get involved with that. So um, once again, I would like to thank you all for coming. I would also like to thank the audience uh, for participating and watching us. Mm -hmm. But we'd like to say that uh, what we do in Rotary is changing the world one step at a time. And with this group and what they're doing worldwide is making one huge difference. So thank you very much for joining us.